to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Luke Balcom, and in this video, we'll be discussing a blog written by Maria del Pilar Fernandez. It's about my research on YouTube, loneliness, and mental health. The blog highlights a new study that analyzed both the positive and negative impacts of YouTube on mental health. The study found that regular users of YouTube, especially those under 29 years old who watch content about other people's lives, tend to feel more overwhelmed and anxious than irregular users. I recommend reducing the time spent on YouTube to just two hours a day. We'll also discuss about how YouTube affects our mental health, the development of parasocial relationships and the importance of seeking other forms of social interaction to promote mental health. Stay tuned to learn more about this important topic. Your time on YouTube, regular users have worse mental health. By Maria Del Pilar Fernandez, we are spending more and more time on YouTube watching tutorials, reviews, or videos of influencers playing live. The amount of content that we can find on this platform is impressive, not to mention that almost everything is entertaining. But, are we aware of how it influences our minds? The more videos we consume, the more prone we are to anxiety, depression, and isolation. This is indicated by a new study from the Australian Institute for Suicide Research and Prevention, ASRAP, which analyzed both the positive and negative impacts of this platform on mental health. Researchers found that users under 29 years old who regularly watch content about other people's lives tend to feel more overwhelmed and anxious than irregular users. That's why they recommend reducing the time we spend on YouTube to just two hours a day. Now, is it really necessary to limit ourselves in this way? The best way to know is by evaluating the findings. How YouTube affects our mental health. YouTube has an addictive nature like TikTok and other social media platforms, as it is designed to trap the viewer. This happens very often among teenagers, as they are highly influenced and are carried away by what entertains them. In this sense, they could start watching a video on YouTube and end up watching two hours of banal content. However, this form of addiction does not have to be something negative for their mental health. Researchers from the Australian Institute of Suicide Research and Prevention, ASRAP, consider that the real problem for frequent users is the development of parasocial relationships. That is when a person directs their interest, time, and love to another person who is completely unaware of their existence. Because, yes, although it is difficult for us to admit, few content creators develop closer relationships with their followers. These online relationships can fill a void for people who, for example, have social anxiety. However, they can exacerbate their problems when they do not participate in face-to-face -face interactions, which are especially important in the developmental years. The study also found that frequent users are more exposed to suicide-related content due to suggested viewing algorithms. While ideally, people should not be able to search for these topics, YouTube's algorithm offers recommendations that can send us to potentially dangerous videos for our mental health. Dr. Balcom advised that with vulnerable children and adolescents engaging in high-frequency use, it could be valuable to monitor and intervene through artificial intelligence. Limiting time on YouTube. That is why ASRAP researchers recommend that regular users limit their time on YouTube and seek other forms of social interaction to promote mental health. How much exactly? For the purposes of the study, more than two hours of daily consumption would qualify as high frequency use and more than five hours daily as saturated use. Therefore, they consider two hours or less daily would be ideal to avoid high levels of anxiety, isolation, and depression. However, the final decision lies with each one of us. YouTube is increasingly used for mental health purposes, mainly to search for or share information. Consequently, we are increasingly exposed to content that can benefit or harm our mood. So at least we should consider this before clicking on another video on our playlist. The study, the impact of YouTube on loneliness and mental health can be accessed from https colon slash slash dx org 10.3390 informatics 10 million and 20 thousand and thirty nine the blog can be found in spanish at https colon slash slash www.techcrispy.com the 12th of may 2023 salad mental usuarius youtube thanks for listening to my youtube channel 
Dr. Luke Balcom here again. So now we'll talk about how to limit your time on YouTube. I know it can be easy to get lost in all the amazing content, but it's important to have healthy screen time habits. First, you can set a timer on your phone or computer for the amount of time you want to spend on YouTube. Once the timer goes off, it's time to log off and do something else. Another option is to use the YouTube app's built-in feature called Take a Break. You can set a reminder to take a break after a certain amount of time and the app will pause your video and remind you to take a break. Lastly, you can try setting specific times of the day for YouTube use. For example, only watching YouTube during your lunch break or after dinner. This can help you to stay on track and limit your screen time. Remember, it's important to have a healthy balance between screen time and other activities. I hope these tips were helpful. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe for more content.